Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ya ayyuhal muslimoon. To the long-time listener and first-time visitor, we welcome you to this episode. Now without further ado, let's get into it. Inna alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nasta'afiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shuroori anfusina wa min sayyiyati a'amalina min yahdihi allahu falamudillala ومن يضلل فلا هادي له أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله الناصح الأمين اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد Alhamdulillah ala ni'matil Islam wa sunnah. All praise and thanks belong to Allah for guiding us to Islam and for guiding us to the sunnah. Ya ibadullah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he has bestowed upon us many blessings. It is imperative that we take advantage of these blessings and that we utilize them in a manner in which he is pleased with. Jalla wa'ala. Bithnillahi ta'ala, Resonating words, a message for the dominion. We want to look at Surah Al-Mulk. Just the first few verses from it. But before doing that, it is important that we know that this Surah was a Surah that was revealed in Mecca. And this has within it tremendous benefit. Also this Surah is a surah where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Inna surata min al Quran thalathuna ayah. That verily a surah, a chapter from the Quran, that is 30 verses. 30 verses. Shafa'at li rajulin hatta ghufra lahu. That it will intercede on behalf of an individual until that individual is forgiven. وَهِيَ سُورَةُ تَبَارُكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ And verily it is the chapter of تَبَارُكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ أي سورة الملك This hadith حسنه الالباني ورواه الترمذي The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam due to the tremendous nature of this chapter of the Qur'an there comes a hadith on Jabir radiyallahu ta'ala anhu anna nabiy sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kana la yanam hatta yaqra alif la mim tanzil ay surah as-sajda wa tabaraka alladhi bi yadihi al-mulk ay surah al-mulk that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he did not go to sleep at night until he recited Surah as sajda and Surah Al-Mulk. This hadith, Sahahu Al-Albani Warawahu Al-Turmadi. So this chapter is a chapter that is tremendous, and as such, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he wouldn't go to sleep before he recited it in Surah as sajda So this gives us the indication that this chapter has in it extremely beneficial lessons as every chapter of the Quran has in it extremely beneficial lessons from these lessons من مقاصد السورة from these lessons we have the mentioning of a number يعني ذكر جملة من صفات العظمة لله سبحانه وتعالى there is some mention of some of the magnificent and outstanding and tremendous uh, attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Wa tufarrudihi. Yani ka tufarrudihi subhanahu wa ta'ala bil mulk. So an example of this is like how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is singled out when it comes to owning the dominion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the only owner of the dominion, the sole owner of the dominion of the heavens and the earth. 
wa qudratihim subhanahu wa ta'ala this chapter also mentions something about the tremendous might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala naam طيب also it mentions how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he created the heavens and the earth and how the creation of the heavens is a creation khalqan baligan ghayat al-itqan it is a creation that is exceedingly magnificent and it is the epitome of something that is done in the most perfect of manners wa kullu dhalika dalilun ala wahdaniyati Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi uluhiyatihi and all of this it points us to the fact that Allah Ta'ala, He is one. It points us to the fact of the oneness of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala as it relates to His worship. Because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He is the one who created the heavens and the earth by Himself. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He is the one who He owns the dominion of the heavens and the earth by Himself. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is the one who has made the sky as He has made it without any rifts by Himself. So therefore, all ibadah belongs to Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Naam. Just like he had no partners in the aforementioned things, then likewise, he has no partners as relates to his worship. Naam. So there is no share of the worship that belongs to anything or anyone. All of the worship belongs into Allah and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. Naam. Also in this chapter, we see a tahdhir nas min kaydish shaytan. There is a warning to human beings, to mankind, from the plots of the shaytan. Naam. Wa bayan bi anna al naja fi al tiba' al rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It also clearly states that success is found in following the Messenger of Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Wal Khusran Fitakvibihi and that misery is linked to denying and belying the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Okay? So this chapter is a chapter and these are just some of the benefits and the fruits that we learn and some of the lessons that are contained inside of this tremendous chapter of the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He begins this tremendous surah with Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. As we know, this is ayah mustaqilla. This is a separate verse that is not connected to this particular surah, but comes at the head of this surah. Okay? Allah ta'ala, He says in the first verse of this tremendous chapter, تَبَارَكَ الَّذِي بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ وَهُوَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah Ta'ala, He says what translated means, Blessed is He in who, Blessed is He in His hands, or the one who in His hands is the dominion of the heavens and the earth, يعني, and He is able to do all things. نعم. So blessed is He, who in his in his hands is the dominion, and he is able to do all things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he goes on, and bithilahi ta'ala, we'll come back to these ayat, and we'll look more into them. Allah ta'ala, he says, الَّذِي خُلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ لِيَبْلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا وَهُوَ الْعَزِيزُ الْغَفُورُ And he is the one, who has created death and who has created life, that he may test you which of you is best indeed. And he is the Almighty, the all forgiven. Naam, he is the Almighty, the all forgiven. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here there is a tremendous lesson in why Allah ta'ala he mentioned these two specific names of his, Al Aziz and Al Ghafur, as we will come to see. Bismillah ta'ala. Allah ta'ala, he goes on to say, الَّذِي خَلَقَ سَبْعَ سَمَاوَاتٍ طِبَاقًا 
ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فرجع البصر هل ترى من فطور الله تعالى he says what means and he is the one who has created the seven heavens one above the other you can see no fault in the creations of the most merciful look again can you see therein any rifts Allah Ta'ala he says ثُمَّ رُجِعِ الْبَصَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ يَنْقَلِبَ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ خَاسِيَا وَهُوَ حَصِير وَهُوَ حَصير Allah Ta'ala he says look again yet look again and your sight shall return to you in a state of humiliation and completely worn out tired, worn out now Allah Ta'ala he tells us in the last ayah that we want to look at in this evening's Sitting with Allah Taala, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمُصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينِ وَأَعْتَدَنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ Allah Taala He says what means, and indeed we have adorned the nearest heavens with lamps, and we have made such lamps as missiles to drive away the shayatin, the devils. And we have prepared for them a torment of the blazing fire. So those shayateen, those devils, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he informs us here that their punishment will be the blazing fire. So anyone who takes the path of these shayateen, then this is what they have waiting for them, the blazing fire. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, going back to the first verse, Allah ta'ala, he says, Tabaraka al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk, wa huwa ala kulli shay'un qadir. That blessed is he who in his, in his hands is the dominion, and he is able to do all things. There is tremendous benefits that is contained in this ayah and every ayah of the Qur'an. But let's look at this ayah. Fi qawlihi ta'ala al-ladhi bi yadihi al-mulk. Let's let us look to Allah ta'ala's statement, the one who in in his hands, there is the dominion. Qal ibn Abbas, radiyallahu ta'ala anhuma, ya'ni, as-sulta, yu'izzu, wa yudhillu. He said what this means is that Allah ta'ala, he controls the dominion, he controls the kingdom. All of the authority is his. He honors some, and he belittles others. Or he honors some, and he um, makes others lowly. Naam. So Allah Ta'ala, and I want you just to reflect on this, He begins this chapter of the Quran by informing us that He is the one who in His hands is the dominion. Naam. Who is the owner, controller, the one who has created the universe? Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Imam Al-Kathir, he mentions, يُمَجِّلُ تَعَالَى نَفْسَهُ الْكَرِيمَةِ That Allah Ta'ala, He glorifies and exalts Himself. وَيُخْبِرُ أَنَّهُ بِيَدِهِ الْمُلْكِ And He informs us that in His hands is the dominion of the heavens and the earth. So Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, when we say a message يعني, for the dominion, then this is a message that we, first and foremost, the human beings, the sentient beings, we need to take full notice of. And likewise, the jinn need to take full notice of and to understand it so that they may act in a manner that is appropriate. Now, so when Allah Ta'ala informs us that he is the owner of the universe, Allah Ta'ala, he is telling us, هو المتصرف في جميع المخلوقات that he is the one who he is the arranger of the affairs of everything in creation نعم. and from that is what Ibn Abbas mentions that Allah Ta'ala he honors some and he lowers others all of this is by his is, 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 is by his wisdom and he is not challenged as relates to any of this. Naam. Allah Ta'ala, he is the arranger of the affairs of his creation. 
Bima yasha, with whatever he wishes. La mu'aqiba li hukmihi. There is no commentator or reviewer of his rulings. Now, Allah Ta'ala la yus'alu amma yaf'alu li qahrihi wa hikmatihi wa adlihi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, none questions him about what he does. Allah ta'ala, he is the one who overpowers everything. He is the one who his wisdom, and due to his wisdom, his, his splendor, his wisdom, and his justice, putting everything in his proper place, none questions Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala about what happens here none has the ability or the capability of questioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala none challenges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as relates to these things to give you an example Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written upon human beings that they eat he has written upon human beings that they drink he has written upon human beings that the consumption of these aforementioned things, then they will result in waste that has to be expelled from an individual. This is the process. Individual, they eat, they drink. Some of that food and liquid is utilized as fuel for the body, and that which is not used, then it is discarded as waste. And this is the process. A person can't come and say, I don't like this process of eating and drinking and then having to expel the waste. So therefore, we're going to do something different. No one has that option. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has written upon us that we have to breathe. We have to inhale and exhale. Now, no one can come and say, this dependency that we have on oxygen, I'm not really in favor of it. So therefore, we want to change it up, and we want to inhale and exhale another, you know, another substance. Uh, and we're going to get rid of this oxygen thing. It doesn't work like that. None of us has a choice as it relates to, the, to these things. All of this points us to the magnificent and the power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He, he has written these rules upon human beings and jinn and everything in this creation and none has any say so as relates to these rules now this is important it's very important because as muslims we willingly submit ourselves unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and i want you to understand this we willingly submit ourselves unto allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now the kuffar they choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those who are obstinate, they choose to disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Why? Because they don't want to follow the rules. They say, we don't want to follow the rules. I don't want nobody telling me what to do. I want to be able to do what I want, when I want, how I want, and no one has a say so as relates to that because I'm free. No one has a say, so at least that because I'm this and because I'm that and because and because and because and because. As if what they are saying has any real bearing in reality. I don't like no one telling me what to do and imposing things upon me. Well, you have to breathe. That's imposed upon you. <laughs> you have no choice. You have to eat. You have to drink. You have no choice. You have to go to sleep. You have no choice. Fight it if you want to. You'll see what happens. Sleep will overtake you. Be, be obstinate. Say, I don't want to eat. Okay, stop eating and see how that ends for you. You're not going to be around but for so long. Stop drinking water. Say, I don't want to drink water no more, okay? Don't drink water. See how, see how long you last. You have no choice as relates to these things. So there are already things in your life that you have acknowledged, have gotten used to. You are well acclimated to not having a choice therein. And how has that harmed you? It hasn't. These rules that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written upon you, of which he did not give you a choice in, 
They are all beneficial for you. None of them has harmed you. All of them have, have in actuality benefited you and are linked to your survival, to your prosperity. All of them. None of them has hurt you. So do you think that the rules in which he has given you a choice as a test on whether or not you're going to listen or not, would you think that these rules will be different as relates to your benefit? The rules in which you have no choice in benefit you. The rules in which you have a choice in, do you think that they are not going to benefit you? But they benefit you. You see? This is the reality. Both rules benefit you for those who know. The Muslims, we choose to submit ourselves unto Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission. Samirna wa ta'na. We hear, we obey. Alhamdulillah. We have chosen to submit ourselves unto Allah. Okay? Because those who do so, they will be successful. They will be, they will attain prosperity. Ala kulli hal. Allah Ta'ala has written these things upon us which we have no say so in. This points us to the fact that Allah Ta'ala, He is the one who He is capable to do all things. Allah Ta'ala, He is the Almighty, the All-Powerful, He is capable, capable of doing all things. Okay? Allah Ta'ala, He goes on to say, ثم قال الذي خلق Now, I want you to understand this. Okay, now, Allah Ta'ala, He mentioned about the creation of the heavens and the earth, the dominion, the mulk. Okay? He did not do that in jest. He did not do that and it's lacking wisdom. It's lacking meaning. It's lacking purpose. I want I really want you to reflect on this. We're talking about the universe. Okay? We're talking about the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created the dominion of the heavens and the earth. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because we say, well, where's, where, where do we come in as human beings? You know, human beings, a lot of times, are, are very selfish and self-centered. They want to know, okay, what about us? The universe? Okay. It's there. Planets, you know, solar systems, things of this nature. Stars, sun, moon, whatever. Right? Okay. What about us, though? Where do we fit into it? Okay. Allah ta'ala tells us, الَّذِي خُلِقُ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاتَ He is the one who created Death and life. Okay? Allah Ta'ala, He created death and life. Maybe the one that we're most concerned with is what? Life. Okay? All right. But why? Is it for no reason? Is it just because? No. Allah Ta'ala, He says, لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا In order to test you, which of you is best in deeds? Which of you is best in deeds? Well, who al Aziz al Ghafur? And he is the Almighty, the oft forgiven. Okay? Allah Ta'ala, He is the one who created death and created life. This is tremendous for us. Yani, the meaning of this ayah, as Al Hafiz ibn Kathiri mentioned, Wal Ma'an al Ayah, Annahu awjada al Khulaiq. Min al Adam, Allah Taala He created the creation from nothing, nothing, okay. And this period of time of nothing, this period of time before we were alive, then this is what death, okay. Then Allah Taala He brought us to life. Why? Liyabluhum. To test them, ayyuhum ahsanu amala, to see which of them is best indeed. Kama qala ta'ala, just as Allah ta'ala, he says, كَيْفَ تَكْفُرُونَ بِاللَّهِ وَكُنْتُمْ أَمْوَاتًا فَأَحْيَاكُمْ How do you disbelieve in Allah when previously you were dead and Allah gave you life? Okay? So here, death is mentioned before life. Because before we were alive, previously we were dead. 
Does that make sense? Because a person may ask, why was death mentioned first? This is why. Because it preceded life. But also, death has a tremendous importance. Because we were dead, then what? Then we were alive, and then, then we what? Then we're going to die. And then we're going to be brought back to life. Now, فَسَمَّا الْحَالَ الْأَوَّلِ وَهُوَ الْعَدَمِ مَوْتَى So, the first situation, the first condition, when we were nothing, was called death. وَسَمَّا هَذِهِ النَّشَأَ حَيَاء And this existence in which we have been brought into has been called life. وَلِهَذَا قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى ثُمَّ يُمِيتُكُمْ ثُمَّ يُحْيِيكُمْ And then we will cause you to die what after you are alive and then we will bring you back to life as it comes in Surah Al-Baqarah. Okay? وَقَالَ قَتَادَ قَتَادَ He mentions الَّذِي خَلَقَ الْمَوْتَ وَالْحَيَاءِ The one who created death and who created life. He mentioned as relates to Allah Ta'ala's statement which translated means the one, and he is the one who created death and life. قَالَ كَانَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ يَقُولْ That verily, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم He used to say إِنَّ اللَّهَ أَذَلَّ بَنِي آدَمْ بِالْمَوْتِ وَجَعَنَ الدُّنْيَا دَارَ حَيَاء ثُمَّ دَارَ مَوْتِ وَجَعَنَ الْآخِرَ دَارَ الْجَزَاء ثُمَّ دَارَ الْبَقَاء He said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he has he has humbled the children of Adam with death. And he has made this world an abode of life and then death. And the hereafter will be the abode of reward and then eternal stay. And then eternal stay. رَوَاهُ مَعْمَرْ عَنْ قَتَادَ This was narrated on by Ma'mar on the authority of Qatada. عَلَى كُلِّنْ Allah Ta'ala He didn't create death. Now, let's go back. The heavens and the earth. Allah Ta'ala mentions that He created them, the universe. And then now death and life. These are tremendous things. We're all created for what? لِيَبَلُوَكُمْ أَيُّكُمْ أَحْسَنُ عَمَلًا So to test you which of you is best indeed? Hey, خَيْرٌ عَمَلًا كَمَا قَالَ مُحَمَّدٌ بْنُ أَجْلَانٍ He said, the one of the, which one of you is best in what you do? Best in what you do. Just like Muhammad bin uh, Ajilan, he mentioned, وَلَمْ يَقُلْ أَكْثَرُ عَمَلًا Allah Ta'ala did not say, which of you has the most deeds? He didn't say that. He said, which of you is best in deeds, not the most deeds, but best in deeds. So it's not necessarily about the quantity, but it rather it's about the quality. So each of us has to be thinking about this. How can we be the best Muslims that we can possibly be? Because we have already been informed that what? That the universe, the heavens and the earth, Death and life, all of it was created to test us, to see which of us is best indeed. So, wouldn't it behoove us to put a lot of emphasis in the constant increasement and betterment of ourselves, to constantly be striving to be better. Better what? Better in sports. Better in the sciences. Better in school. Better in what? The best Muslims we can possibly be. The best servants of Allah we can possibly be. That we keep striving to be a little better and a little better and a little better and a little better so we can be the best in what we do. Because Allah Ta'ala, He says that all of that was, was done so what? To test us. To see which of us is best indeed. Which of us is best indeed. Okay? 
وروي عن ابن عمر مرفوعا أحسن عملا نعم it has been narrated on Ibn Umar with a chain that reaches back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as relates to the statement of Allah Ta'ala Ahsanu Amala Best indeed a Ahsanu Aqulan Ahsanu Aqulan Which of you has the best intellect? Has the best intellect? I, want you, I, just, I just want to stop right here so we think about this because when it comes to our mind's intellect, the first thing that comes to our minds is that which is linked to intelligence, right? So in, that, in a general sense, this enters into it. So we should strive to constantly increase our intellectual abilities. And we should avoid those things that will have an adverse effect upon our intellects. Because the intellect is very important. It's 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 like a uh, it's a very important tool for us if we want to be successful. Our intellect is very important. It is what it's a weapon, and if we don't safeguard it, we're not going to be able to use it to our benefit. Our intellect is that weapon by way in which we can fight the shaitan. And what I mean by this, not saying that when it comes to the deen, we have to figure things out. No, I'm not saying that. Our intellect is that which keeps us in line. That's the, that's the meaning of the intellect, the aql. Nah? Do you know that rope? Do you ever see the, our Bedouin brothers, right? Or our brothers from the Arab countries, and they wear the shmel or the utra, and they have that black thing that goes on top, and it fits there like this? It's called an iqal. Iqal. Nah? This iqal, it stems from the same roots as aql. Now, it stems from the same root, and it stems from aql. But the aql, or the aql, what's the functionality of the aql? The aql is there, and they, used, they wear it around. It's, it's you know, decoration now. It's, it's, like, fashionable now. What you have it is accessory, right? But it had a functionality, and that functionality was that you were able to take the aql off. It was a rope, and then you tie the legs of the camel so it can't run away. Right? So it was there to what? It meant as a restraint for the camel. It restrains it. Okay, the aql, nah, it is that which it restrains an individual from harming themselves. This is the functionality of the intellect. That intellect, by way in which we know not to put our hand into a fire. There's a campfire, a bonfire, what have you. A fire on a stove. Hatta. Our intellect informs us, don't stick your hand in that fire. It's going to hurt you. So yeah, so by way of the intellect, we stay away from those things that's, that, 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 that are going to hurt us. So when Ibn Umar, when he says, Ahsanu aqlan, the one who has the best intellect, then this is the one what who his mind, his intellect is sound, or her mind and intellect is sound, uh, uh, yani, to such an extent that they don't get themselves in trouble. They stop themselves before doing things that's going to hurt them. They restrain themselves. So it's not just the one who, you know, can solve this puzzle, that puzzle, that, that enters into it. So work, you know, work on that. That's fine. It's no problem. But more importantly, that tool by way in which to keep you from getting yourself in trouble. And just like you avoid the fire in the dunya, you most definitely going to use it to avoid the fire in the akhirah. Because this fire that we don't want to put our hands in the dunya seeks refuge in Allah from the fire of the akhirah. Okay? So this is the functionality of intellect. So he says, أَحْسَنُ عَقْلًا وَأَوْرَعُ عَنْ مَحَارِمِ لَا Just in case people didn't get it. He said the one who has the best intellect and the one who they most rigorously avoid the prohibitions of Allah. This is what is meant by Ahsanu Amala. So all of these are meanings that go into Ahsanu Amala. So I want us to understand this Bithnilahi Ta'ala. Naam. And he says, Wa asra'u fi And those who they are the fastest 
in obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or as relates to the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So being an intellectual, a true intellectual, it does not mean that you throw away the naql. Some people, when, they're, when they feel that they have increased in their aql, then they run away from the naql. When they feel that they are intellectuals, then they turn away from what Allah has revealed because they think they're too smart for it. Oh, I understand how things work. You don't understand anything. If your intellect has led you to believe that you are in no need of what Allah has revealed, then you are an intellectual dummy. You are the smartest fool in the world because this is not the functionality of the intellect. Your intellect does not work. You're as smart as the man who walks into the house and then jumps out the window. Absolutely, absolute buffoonery, okay? The intellect is, is, is there to keep us in line so that we can understand what Allah has revealed so that we may apply it properly. This is the functionality of the intellect. And so that we may use it in our worldly life to benefit ourselves for building this and constructing that or whatever the case is, okay? But it's for our benefit, not for us to use it to get us in trouble. For Dayd ibn Iyad, he mentioned, he said, Akhlasu wa aswabu was meant by Ahsan wa Amala. And all of these meanings, none of them contradict each other. This is what all enters into the meaning of the best indeed. He says, Akhlasu wa aswabu. What is meant by it, he said, it means the most sincere and the most correct. And then he mentions, he says, He said that an action is not accepted until it is, it is sincere and it is correct. And then he goes on to explain what is meant by that. Al-Khalis, what is sincere, إِذَا كَانَ إِذَا كَانَ لِلَّهِ سُبْحَانُهُ وَتَعَالَى If it is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is sincere. That's what is meant by sincere. Naam. والصواب and correct إذا كان على سنة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم if it is upon the sunnah of the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم then this is what correct so an action is not accepted unless it is sincere for Allah and upon the sunnah of the prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم نعم so this is what is meant by أحسن عملا also what enters into the meaning of أحسن عملا أي أيكم أشهد في الدنيا وأترك لها meaning the one who they better stay away from the world who stay away from the world the best and those who abandon it and I, and we have spoken about zuhud in the past so what is meant by zuhud and staying away from the world meaning that we avoid those things in this dunya that are not going to help us in the hereafter. So all of those things in the dunya that either don't help us in the hereafter or they're going to get us in trouble in the hereafter, we stay away from them and that's zuhud. That's zuhud. Naam? Tarku ma la fil akhirah. Leaving off that does not, that which does not benefit us in the next life. That's zuhud. Not leaving off the dunya in totality. Why? Because we use the dunya to strive for the akhirah. Okay? So, can you give sadaqah if you don't have any money? I, I'm not talking about smiling and I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about monetarily, monetarily, monetary sadaqah. Can you give monetary sadaqah if you don't have money? No. Can you build a masjid if you don't have money? We know smiles or sadaqah. Naam. Give smiles all the time. That's fine. That's, that's easy, sadaqah. Do that. But we still need money, sadaqah, too. Okay? Now, if you don't work, you don't have any skills, you didn't learn anything to have any type of marketable skills, or, or you know, in, in, that, in that nature, so you're not making money, how are you going to give sadaqah monetary? How are you going to do it? So you're going to have to devote yourself to what? These aspects of the dunya so that you can strive for the hereafter. So, when it's said to leave the dunya, we're not talking about these things that benefit you here in this world and in the next. We're not talking about those things. A man has to spend on his wife. You can't do that if you don't work. You can't do that if you're a deadbeat. You can't do that if you if you say, well, I just want to leave the dunya because... No, that's not what it means by leaving the dunya, brother. You have to take care of your family. In order to do that, you need money. So you have to work. And 
the more skills you have, then the greater uh, pay you could demand. And you can more easily take care of your family and take care of others. You can give charity, take care of your neighbors, take care of extended family members, help build a masjid, help feed the poor, help feed the hungry, help feed the refugees, so on and so forth. Naam? And likewise for the sisters. But ala kulli hal, these aspects of the dunya, we need what? So that we can strive for the akhirah. Okay? So this is what is meant. So those who leave off those things of the dunya that don't, that don't help them, and definitely they leave off those things that hurt them. They leave it off. Those who do that the best, then these are, this, this is what is uh, uh, being spoken of. So all of these things enter into the meaning of ahsanu amala. Naam? And then Allah Ta'ala, He says, well, who will aziz al ghafur? Now, after mentioning that we have been put here to be tested, what is the wisdom in mentioning these two names in particular? Great wisdom. I want you to pay very close attention. After Allah Ta'ala tells us that He put us here to be tested, He informs us, well, who al Aziz? Al Ghafur. That He is the one. Who al Aziz? Min men asahu that he is the most mighty. This is a warning to those who disobey him. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he is the most mighty as relates to taking into account those who disobey him. All right? So that you can maybe better understand this. I don't want you to misunderstand, but so you can better understand. And tiqami, yani those, he's going to take, um, what would you say? He is going to take to account. And so you can kind of understand revenge on those who disobey him. Because a lot tell you, don't do this, don't do that. You went and did it anyway? Mm, those people who did that? Oh, they're going to see what happens. They're going to see what happens. And Allah Ta'ala, who al Aziz, He's the most mighty. The most mighty. So He is not the one who you want to anger. Allah is not the one who you want to anger. Allah is not the one you want to disbelieve in. Allah is not the one you want to make fun of and be lying and deny. No, no. You think you're going to laugh now? Forever you're going to be in trouble. You're going to be crying. You're going to be shouting. You're going to be in misery that you can't even imagine. It's not worth it. Because who Aziz. Okay? So there's a warning to those who want to disobey Allah Ta'ala. Who will Aziz? You were put here as a test. Who will Aziz? You don't want to obey? You want to disbelieve? You want to find out in a worse way what's going to happen to you. Who will Aziz? He is the most powerful. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us, Al Ghafur. And he's also Al Ghafur. And this is the nature you find of the Quran is that what? It 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 it, it uh, discourages us from things and it encourages us to do other things, right? So it's like a warning and a glad tiding. And it's the nature of the da'wah. It's very important. It's the nature of the da'wah. The da'wah. The proper call, the call of the NBA and the Rusul was that which was filled with both of these aspects. It was a glad tidings and it was a warning. So it's important for the students of knowledge, for those who are teachers and educators, your dawah it can't be too un, it can't be unbalanced. Because if your dawah is just doom and gloom, everything is doom and gloom, this is not proper. This is like the dawah of the Khawadij. Like the Dao of the renegades, the Khadijites. Now, it's all doom and gloom. Right? And we know that's 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 wrong. The Prophet Salami called the Khawadis Kilabunab, the dogs of the hellfires. So we know that's wrong. That's not the way. And then likewise, it can't be a Dawa where it's all sunshine and you know, honey petals or what rose petals or whatever the case is, and that's it. Just encourage, 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 encourage. And that's all you want to do is encourage motivational speaker, everything, all the time, 24-7. No, come on. That doesn't make sense. Can't be. Because if it's all like that, then how would you ever have fear of Allah Ta'ala? The Prophet Sallallahu said, فَتَّقُوا النَّارِ وَلَوْ بِشَقِّ التَّمَرَ Fear the fire even by a piece of a date, a half or a piece of, or less than that of a date. 
So fear the fire. Put between yourself and the fire a protection by giving sadaqah. Ma'am, because that's something that we should be scared of. We should be scared of the fire. We should be scared of Allah Ta'ala's punishment. We should be scared of Allah Ta'ala. We should be scared of angering Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. We have to be between hope and fear. Okay? So the dawah can't be all doom and gloom and it can't be all sunshine and, you know, rose petals or whatever the case is. It has to be balanced. Some of this and some of that. So Allah Ta'ala, He scares us here in this ayah. Well, who will Aziz? Terrifying. And then Allah Ta'ala, He gives us hope. al ghafur he is Aziz on those who disobey him. Al Ghafur liman taba ilay. He is all forgiving to those who repent unto him. So if you messed up, repent, Allah will forgive you. So we have hope. We have hope. This is the this is the way of the dawah. This is the proper dawah. Is you have to give both fear, hope. That makes sense. In any event, I don't want to hold you longer. Then, more, much, 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 much more longer than we have already been uh, speaking. But there's so much that we can talk about. But I want you just to reflect on this, right? Uh, in the next three uh, verses, Allah Taala He tells us, Allah Taala Allah Ta'ala, he says that he is the one who has created the seven heavens, one above the other. You Can you see any fault in the creation? Now, you can't see any fault in the creation of the most merciful. Look in, look again. Can you see any rifts? I mean, look at the sky. You're not going to see no fault in the sky. But look again. Do you see any rifts? Do you see any tears? Any inconsistencies? Anything don't match? <laughs> no, you don't. That points us to what? The power and the might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then Allah ta'ala, he, he tells us in the next ayah, ثُمَّ رُجِعِ الْبَصَرَ كَرَّتَيْنِ And then, look again. You, you looked at it really good? All right, look again. No, look again. Look twice. Look again at twice. Examine it more. And what's going to happen? يَنْقَلِبَ إِلَيْكَ الْبَصَرُ خَاسِئًا your sight is going to come back to you in a humiliated state, worn out. Because you're not going to see any imperfections. Right? And then, not just that, I want you to reflect on this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after telling us that He created us, uh, the, the, the millions of the heavens and the earth, He created everything and created us, life, death, in order to test us. Then Allah Ta'ala tells us, look, look at the sky. Look at all the attention that's been put inside the sky that is perfect. You don't see any type of rifts. You don't see any type of inconsistencies. You don't believe? Look again. No, matter of fact, look again and again, and your sight is going to come back to you completely worn out, humiliated, worn out. You would have completely failed in your attempt to find a rift, a tear, or inconsistency inside of the sky. You're going you're gonna to complete utter failure is what's going to happen. Right? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he tells us Walakoda Zayyanna Sama at Dunya. And then we not uh, he perfected it. Yeah, it's, it's perfect. And then not only did he perfect it, but then he what he adorned it, he beautified it. Be Muslabiha Wajalnaha Rujuma Lishayatin. He adorned it with heavenly lamps. Naam uh and such lamps have been made as missiles to drive away the shayateen. These shayateen that come and they misguide human beings. So Allah Ta'ala created the sky, no rifts, no tears, no inconsistencies. And then he beautified the sky with what? With stars. Allah Ta'ala beautified the sky with stars. And from them, from these things that are in the heavens... Allah Ta'ala has taken some of these things, these meteors, as what? As missiles to hit the shayateen with and to drive them away when they try to go and steal the secrets from the heavens, okay? And then Allah Ta'ala, He informs us, in case anyone is uh, impressed with the way of the shayateen, which I don't know anybody right mind that will be, 
But nonetheless, human beings, you have some of them that are, that are not in their right mind. Allah Ta'ala, he tells us, was waiting for these shayateen. Allah Ta'ala, he says, well, And we have made for them, what we have prepared for them, was waiting for them, is what? Is a torment of the blazing fire. Okay? So now, let's, 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 let's step back for a second, and let's think about this. Let's think about this. Allah Ta'ala, he created the heavens and the earth. Allah Ta'ala, he created death. Allah Ta'ala created life. Allah Ta'ala created all this to test us. And then Allah Ta'ala informs us that he has made the sky as such that there is no rift, there's no inconsistencies inside of the sky. Then Allah Ta'ala challenges us. Look at the sky. Can you find any rifts? No. Look again. Look again. You see any rifts? Your sight is going to come back to you humiliated and worn out. You're going to be tired. You're not going to find it. You're going to fail utterly. Okay? And then Allah Ta'ala tells us that after that, or, 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 or also, right, also, he adorned the heavens with stars. Alhamdulillah, Allah Ta'ala, he has blessed us by giving us the knowledge of what these stars are. Okay? And we know these are what? These are distant suns, right, that their light took so long to even reach us and our sky become visible unto us so on and so forth so all of this was done with great care and great purpose this is serious we're talking about a universal thing now okay this is something that is tremendous all of this was done to see which of us is best indeed this is no joke this is no joke do you know how ungrateful a person is? Let me tell you, if your wife, brother, if your wife made for you your favorite food, your favorite dish, and she all day worked on making your favorite dish, she cleaned the house, she made your favorite dish, she, I don't know, she burnt candles and incense and perfumed the house, the house was looking perfect and, per, you know, so perfumed and smelled so well, she you know, uh, groomed herself and she was looking outstanding and she made you your best food and then she made you dessert and, 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 and to the end of it and then you came home, you threw off your clothes, yeah, you know, your work clothes and you put on your house towel or whatever the case is, you plop yourself on the couch and you just totally ignored all of that and then you started to argue with her and tell her this and tell her that even after you don't acknowledge and realize what she's done for you. What word can be what word can we use to describe you? I'm pretty sure it's a lot of words. The sisters might have a lot of words they're going to call you. But at the being nice, you're going to say, man, you are ungrateful. You are ingrate. She did all this for you? And this is what you're going to, this how you're going to, this is this what you're going to do with that? She did all this for you. You're going to ignore all of this stuff? And then sit there and argue with her? And pick fights with her? And this and that and that? And you don't want to eat the food? and all? Really? Man, you are ungrateful. You're ungrateful. And for Allah is the highest example. So now, all the, Allah has given us everything. And a person is going to choose to disbelieve in Allah and to pray to a cow or a rock or a stone or some made-up fictitious character or some human being that had to eat and drink and go to the bathroom. Or take their desires as gods? Is that not the most, the most, and the greatest expression of ungratefulness ever? No doubt, no doubt it is. Nam, no doubt it is. So from the meanings of kufr is what? Is to be ungrateful. It enters into the meanings of kufr. Okay? Ala kulli hal. This is a serious affair. The stakes are high. The consequences of not getting it right are severe. And the reward for getting it right is beyond your wildest imagination beyond the best 
that you could ever have imagined is beyond it. That which was mentioned was so outstanding, was so great from the reward of the people of Jannah. That which we know about is be it blows our minds. It's beyond our minds. Like it blows our minds. It's so awesome. And then Allah Ta'ala tells us that He has things in Jannah that's even better than that, that no eye has seen, and, and no heart has ever dreamed of, has ever even wanted. So this thing's waiting in Jannah is even better than that which has been mentioned to us. And that which has been mentioned to us is beyond our, you know, it blows our mind. Every time I eat something, it keeps getting better and better and better and better and better and better and better. And better. Yeah, subhanAllah. Person that died in the dunya, if he drank something and it tastes good, he took another sip, it was better. He took another sip and it was better. He'll faint. He'll fall out. What is this? It keeps getting better. It keeps getting, keeps getting, keeps getting. Oh, you're going to pass out. Then there are things in Jannah that's even greater than that that we never, no one even seen or even thought about, even to even want. Yeah, subhanAllah. So the stakes are high and the rewards are tremendous. So we have to get it right. We have to get it right. This whole dominion, this whole universe has not been put here just for no reason. Has not been put here just as a thing of play. Has not been put here for that. So let's remember that. And let's strive to be those who are the best indeed. Nakhtafi, may have the Qadr, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ala Nabiina Muhammad, wa ala Alihi wa Sahbihi ajma'in, wa Jazakum Allahu Khairan.